we are not the strongest animals on the planet, we don't have the sharpest claws or anything like that, but we network really well with each other and that's what makes us strong. So I'm always very negative about the idea of lone wolfing it or going it alone. But that said... <laughs> This is Praxis. I recently did a video where I asked you guys where you would like to see me take this channel. What kinds of videos are you looking for? What sorts of topics would you like me to address? What sorts of questions would you like me to answer for you? Uh, first off, I want to mention uh, a number of people kind of interpreted that as me, uh, you know, for lack of a better way of expressing it, as uh, me being in a position where I'm kind of like, like, what do I need to do to make you guys love me? <laughs> and I, I, I get how it might have come off on that in in that kind of way. I didn't mean it like that. Um, you know, certainly it's more fun when more people watch a video, there's more interaction. I love the comments and I learn a lot from people's comments. So yeah, it's more fun when more people are watching the videos and that's great. But really where I was coming at it from, and a lot of you guys got exactly what I was saying is, you know, I've just finished this new homestead. It's got all these great features in it. It's, you know, my dream project for a long time to have created this. And it's put me in a position that is uh, really separated from where I was, you know, five or ten years ago, and really separated from a lot of where you guys are, uh, because you know, well, I'm I'm in a root cellar fallout shelter right now. I didn't have something like this five years ago. I know a lot of you guys don't have that. And I'm going to be doing videos certainly about how I've kind of set this place up and you know some features that I'm working into it so it'll work as a fallout shelter and all that. But that a kind of video like that doesn't do people a lot of good if like your biggest concern is like how do I fit more pasta into my closet in my small apartment because that's all I've got. You know, uh, everyone, all of us are at different uh, stages in this preparedness game. There is no finish line where you get there and you're like, oh, done. I've got everything. You know, there's always more that you can do, you know, and while I am certainly a lot further along than I was five years ago, I hope in five years, five years from now, I look back at myself today and I'm like, ha, that guy, he had no idea. And like, you know, he still had so much more, uh, you know, progress to make. You know, that's a good thing if you keep growing all the time and you look back at yourself in the past and you're like, ah, you know. How cute. That was so cute back then. Um, so that was where I was kind of coming at it from. I got a lot of great comments, a lot of great feedback. Some of the things that you guys said that you wanted to see more of uh, were more in-depth things, uh, you know, where I, I go deeper into stuff. And one thing in particular that uh, a number of people had commented on, and this is what this video is about, is the idea of kind of feeling like you're going it alone. On this channel, I all the time uh, am talking about the idea of like the lone wolf, the person that's like one man, it's always one man in a movie, but you know, like one person against the world and it's like they're, you know, off on their own and they're just, you know, doing all, everything all by themselves. Uh, that's kind of like, it's a Hollywood trope, you know, where it's, you know, it's like that one solitary person and they don't need anyone else, they're just so rugged and individual. Um, I'm always very negative about that idea. I really think it takes a community to be really effective at humaning. Uh, you know, if you want to human effectively, we do it in social groups. That's the way our brains are wired. That's certainly the way our bodies are wired. You know, we are not the strongest animals on the planet. We don't have the sharpest claws or anything like that, but we network really well with each other and that's what makes us strong. So I'm always very negative about the idea of lone wolfing it or going it alone. But that said, you know, a lot of us are in that situation. I am in that situation myself. Uh, I'm a single parent. I know that there are uh, a lot of people, especially people who commented on that last video, that are single parents. And, uh, you know, that can feel kind of isolating. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit in this video. And I don't have any silver bullets or, you know, magic wands that I can wave to just like, like do this and then you know <laughs> everything will you know you know fix itself and and you know everything will be magically wonderful. But I, I want to open this up as kind of a forum. I share kind of my experience with that a little bit, and I, I know a lot of us would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, you know what it's been like for you as a single parent. It's it seems kind of odd to me that there are so many single parents who are into prepping. I don't know maybe maybe part of going through the process of becoming a single parent can be kind of a uh, a catalyst that throws people into prepping and preparedness. I mean, it is kind of an SHTF event in your life if, you know, like you're together and you're with someone and then that breaks apart and that can feel like your world is crumbling to some degree. And, you know, maybe a, a lot of that has, you know, caused people to think about like, you know, I wasn't prepared for that. Maybe I want to be prepared for life upheavals in the future. And maybe that's been a catalyst that kicked a lot of people down that road. I don't know why 
It is the case that there are so many of us, but there, there aren't a lot of us, and, and it can be really difficult. From my own experience, you know, I live uh, here at the new homestead with my boy River, and Amber is our housemate that lives with us, and, you know, honestly, you know, I get them involved in projects from time to time, and, you know, when I need to do something, like if I, I need something to be held up while I screw something in, yeah, I can get Amber to, like, hold a board up or whatever, but, you know, you don't feel like you're in a situation where it's like, this is my team and I can rely on my other team members. You know, it's like, I've got helpers, but that's kind of about the best that it is. And I don't fault people for that. I know that that's kind of the way our culture is, and certainly that is the way that it is with, you know, younger people. I think it takes time in your life to develop that sense of delayed gratification, you know, going through pain and suffering and, you know, uh, difficulty uh, now so that you can make things better for yourself in the future. You know, that is kind of, that's an acquired taste. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of people who are fully grown adults, allegedly, in our culture that, you know, are still trying to learn that lesson. So I try not to be too harsh on people for that. And, you know, patience is one of those things that sometimes I, uh, you know, I struggle with. I know myself, you know, sometimes if I'm having a really difficult day and I'm like working on shit and I'm like, you know, putting up wiring so that, you know, if the missiles come in, we have a place to go. And then, you know, I go inside in the house later on and someone's like complaining about like, we don't have any orange juice. <laughs> just like, you know, it's that kind of like first world problems. I'm like, I'm not in the mood to listen to this kind of stuff. It's like, I, you know, I'm bleeding. I've got cracks all over me. I've got like chemical burns on my hands because I've been working and I don't want to hear about the fact that there's not orange juice in the house. So, you know, it can be, it can be frustrating. It can be kind of, uh, you know, feeling like, you know, you're a bit alone. And that's one of the great things uh, about this community, I think, that we have that ability to kind of share those experiences with other people because, you know, we're all going through that to some degree. I, I, I think the idea that you and your family are atypically, you know, bad or atypically lazy, uh, you know, I think that's incorrect. You know, if you feel like, you know, you wish that, you know, your kids or your spouse or whomever was more into this stuff because you feel like this stuff is really important, and I'm there right there with you, I mean, Especially now in our history, it seems like, you know, we're on the tracks, you know, you can, if you can't see it, you can definitely hear the freight train coming and, you know, we got to do something right now to get ourselves in a better position when that train comes around the corner and plows into us. And it can feel frustrating to be the only one in your group, the only one in your family that feels that sense of urgency. And, you know, I like, I don't have that magic bullet that says like, you know, do this and then suddenly everyone's going to want to help out. But what I can say is that for all of us who do feel this sense of responsibility, this sense of um, uh, urgency with all of this, you know, this is a feeling that it, it, it's a human, it's a part of the human experience. There have always been people that have, you know, kind of been I like to think ahead of the curve, you know, a lot of the, the rest of the society, you know, might see preppers as, you know, these crazy nuts that are uh, doing all these things that are unnecessary. We like to see ourselves, and hopefully we're accurate in this, actually, I don't want to say hopefully we're accurate about this, because hopefully we're all crazy, <laughs> and none of these crazy things end up happening, but, you know, uh, for our own sense of sanity, hopefully, you know, we're not crazy, and, you know, these are reasonable concerns that we should have, and, but that said, hopefully, you know, they never come to pass, but, you know, People have always been in our position, and this is just part of human nature. There are bell curves in all of nature, and those can be for intelligence, those bell curves can be for strength, those bell curves can be for traits like, you know, looking out into the future and thinking about the future. And, you know, some people, they are really far out on that bell curve where they are always thinking about the future and they have really clear future vision about what's going to be happening uh, out there, but, you know, maybe those people don't have the best, you know, ability to, you know, appreciate today. I mean, that's a strength. You know, you, there, there's there's no sense in preserving life ad infinitum out into the future if you don't ever remember to enjoy any of it. So, uh, you know, you really you really need to kind of keep all those balances together, and, and that is one of the assets that you do have with family. Even if your family, uh, you know, aren't people that are you know, right there with you with that sense of urgency looking into the future about, you know, you know, we really got to get this fallout shelter ready because, you know, you know, the Russians are shooting satellites out of space and who knows where all this is going to go and there's hypersonic missiles that can, you know, go across the world in whatever milliseconds. It's, um, uh, it's really possible to, you know, get so caught up in that that, 
you forget that you know the point of survival is to enjoy your life and that is an attribute that maybe some of our family members can remind us of you know the people that aren't necessarily focused out in the future that's that's my thing that might be your thing but our other family members have traits as well you know the traits that remind us to enjoy the days that we do have because the days that we have right now at least compared to what a lot of us fear might be coming uh, again I hate the word fear but you know are wary of what might be coming the days right now are pretty darn awesome and it would be a real shame to kind of miss out on that so I guess that is my advice is if you're having trouble you know getting your family you know totally on board with helping out with all the kind of prepping and preparedness stuff you know think about the assets that your family members do have you know we all have those bell curves and you you and I might be really far out in the upper reaches of you know looking out into the future and discerning what's going to be happening from the tea leaves that we kind of you know have available to us at the moment but you know other people have other strengths and you know it's a, it's good to appreciate those kinds of things as opposed to thinking it's like ah oh, my family's a bunch of good for nothings you know because they they don't do this one thing you know you got to remember that there are other uh, strengths and those strengths are really important as well because even you know if all these crazy things happen and people rely upon you uh, to you know get them through in, into the future you know we're going to get to a point where we're going to want to make sure we rekindle all of those things so the enjoyment of today and the joy of living that you know sometimes is proper sometimes we forget to engage in that kind of stuff because we're so far focused on on the future that's it i hope that gives you guys some uh, sense of kind of how i see this stuff share definitely below if you have any insights in on any of this stuff because there are a lot of us out there and you know this community has been great for us as a way of connecting with other people i know that it's really helped me because you know if i was just living in a bubble and it was just myself and my family you know both you know immediate family and extended i would feel kind of like geez am i am i really nuts out there because you know you know while you know you're looking at what's going on in the news and and it, I think it really makes sense to prepare for things. And certainly, I mean, the past couple of years have been vindication of the idea that preparing, yes, it was a very good idea. But, you know, still, even, even if you get proven right over and over and over again, you know, you go several months and you're only kind of hanging out with people that think you're crazy, you start to question it yourself, or at least you should. I think that it's a, it's a great sign of sanity is constantly questioning, like, am I really off base on this? I do it all the time. And by virtue of that fact, I'd like to think that it's an asset. That's it. Share your thoughts below, and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.